Savannah, Louisiana. I'm Chef John Foles welcoming you to this great state of ours. These beautiful plantation homes reflect the fascinating history of our culture and cuisine, and I'd like to share this story with you. Why not join me and some of my friends as we visit the plantation homes of our state and cook up another great taste of Louisiana. Funding for this program was provided in part by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of Louisiana Gold and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. Though there were no telephones, television, or for that matter, organized mail, communication was necessary and did take place back in the late 1700s. If the message was urgent, Pony Express or private dispatch could be used. With the advent of the steamboat and trains, communication tended to speed up just a little bit. Many times in the rural areas and cities, a message could be tacked to a tree announcing an upcoming event. Often, simple black ribbons tacked to a gatepost told the whole story. I'm Chef John Foles. There's been a death at Kent House. This notice is written in French, tacked to the fence post, and everyone passing by knew the arrangements of the wake. This Creole-style plantation home was built in 1797 and completed in 1800. It has double matching wings and is certainly one of the oldest Creole homes in all of Louisiana. While at the plantation, I took a stroll with Duffy DeFore, who is one of the guides at the home, and we walked through not only the orchard, but the vegetable and herb garden as we made our way into the old outdoor kitchen. This kitchen is of the period and was brought right onto the grounds at Kent House. As we walked into the kitchen, we saw Carolyn de Kaiser, who was working on the open hearth. Every Wednesday from November to April, you can come in and watch the docents prepare open hearth cookery. Here she's doing cornbread for our meal that we had a little later. Bobby W., who's an authority on Creole culture, tells us a little bit about the plantation home and some of the things that take place there. Okay, Bobby, we're on the interior of Kent House Plantation, and it's a Creole plantation. What makes it different from the other plantations of Louisiana? Well, John, a uh, Creole house is usually a very unpretentious house. It's a, uh, raised on columns. It has a gallery all the way around. Every door has an uh, outside entry, and there's no hallways and uh, very simple in its architectural style. So it's not as ornate as those big old plantation exactly homes in South right. Louisiana. Exactly right, uh, exactly. And, and the, 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 the period is the early 1800s. Yes, well, the Creoles are defined as people that were living in Louisiana from Spain or France before the Louisiana Purchase in 1803 and their descendants. Now, I know that in the month of October, there's a very special display here. In fact, you decorate the house in a month of bereavement. There's been a death in the family, right? That's correct. Let's take a look at it. Good. Confident. Oh. Here you see a, a display that we put out every October. Uh, in this case, a child has died and the coffin is in the living room where it stays for several days. Uh, there's a, a metal wreath on the uh, coffin that goes with the coffin to the grave site and stays there for about a year. And usually this wreath is uh, made out of various materials that will hold up under the weather. The mother is dressed in black and stays that way for a year. The uh, mirrors and, and paintings in the house are covered with uh, black draperies. Oh, black drapes. Mm -hmm. And also, even the children uh, wore some form of bereavement. And here you see a little child's dress with a little black lace in it and that kind of thing. So bereavement was a, a very special, sad time in a Creole family's life. This is probably the only exhibit of this type anywhere in America. It's the only one I know of, and it's very popular, and a lot of people come to see it during the month of October. Now, is there any other room I ought to see? Oh, absolutely. You need to see the dining room. We've got it all laid out with dinner. OK, great. Let's take a look. It may surprise you, but wakes of this type still take place in homes in Louisiana today. After walking through the home, I was able to enjoy an open heart dinner cooked by these ladies, and I remember the menu, pork roast, fricassee, mustard greens. Ah, how could I ever forget that day at Kent House? 
and I won't forget that day at Kent House anytime soon. In fact, it's a wonderful place for anybody to visit in central Louisiana. However, if you're a cook, it's a very special place because of that outdoor kitchen, and you can go in and watch all of the foods being prepared in the typical style of the antebellum and even pre-antebellum, the Creole period. And as a special treat today in the kitchen, I have someone who knows a tremendous amount about open hearth cookery and the cookery of that day. Marion Donaldson is, as I say, an authority on open hearth. She cooks at Kent House just about every Wednesday during the season when that uh, open hearth kitchen is operating. And she's going to come in to share some of those great recipes and stories about what it took to recreate those dishes. Uh, one of the things that I found very special while touring Kent House is that there was a cookbook that was found in the original hand of one of the ladies of the home back in the early beginnings of Kent House. And from that recipe book, we were able to find out what was being cooked in that kitchen, and I'm able to recreate a few of those for you right here today. One of the dishes that I found very special was a smothered fresh sausage recipe. And that sausage recipe was flavored with hunted apple rings. In fact, it was cooked with apple cider. And that was very interesting because I didn't think of apples as being a Louisiana crop. But since then, I've found that everybody had apples on the plantations, or if you were rich enough, you could have them brought in from the markets of New Orleans. So one of the dishes that I'm going to do is that smothered sausage with hunted apples. And I want you to look at my cutting board right here. I have a lot of different Louisiana sausages. Here you see a typical light smoke sausage, and here's one of the heavier smoke, just more degrees of heat and smoke in the smokehouse. Here we have a fresh pork sausage with no seasoning in it. You can see how light this is with the, with the fat in it. And here is a seasoned pork sausage. This one has a little pink color to it, which shows that it is seasoned when this one isn't. Here, again, two little links of flavored garlic sausage and the premier sausage of Louisiana, Andouille. So we had a lot of different possibilities when creating sausage dishes here. And there's a lot of dispute over where did sausages originate. Well, some of the research says that we can attribute the Greeks and the Romans to creating good sausages because as they were marching across the world to conquer all of those foreign lands, they had to eat. And instead of just doing dried beef jerky or pork jerky, they would take the skins of the necks of geese and ducks and all of these animals that they were killing along the way, and they would stuff those skins with chopped meat, sun-dried, flavor it with fish oils, and they would have nice sausages to eat as they went all the way across Europe and Italy and whatever. But I've got a real interesting Cajun sausage here that I'm going to fire up and put into my black iron skillet. This is a fresh pork sausage. You can see just all of the seasonings in here. We have garlic, green onions, red bell pepper, and I'm going to cook it in this spiral. This is about four feet long here. I'm going to put a little oil into my black iron pot. And of course, you can go to the butcher shop, and the butcher will actually uh, stuff the sausage this length for you, and all you have to do is bring it over to that skillet and drop it in whole. Now, just slide it on in like this. It'll go right on into the hot skillet, and it presents very nice when you do it this way, so that's why I like to do it like this. Once that sausage starts to sizzle in the bottom of the skillet, it'll start to render the juices, but if you want to get more of the fat out of the sausage, which is, a, which is very important to some of us, you may want to take a fart and just kind of prick the skin like this, and you'll see just how quickly all of that fat just comes rushing out of the sausage, and you can pour it out so you'll have a much leaner finished dish. So just go ahead and prick it like this and let the bottom of the sausage fry nicely and seal itself. It's going to get nice and golden brown, and the sausage will be sealed, and that's where the color of the dish is going to come from, that nice, really good brown color uh, from the onion gravy will come from that searing or caramelizing of the fat on the bottom of the sausage. Of course, the sausage is pre-seasoned, but I'm going to put just a touch of salt, a little bit of that cracked black pepper on top of it. I'm going to put a touch of my Louisiana pepper sauce because I want to give it a little bit more spice there. And then my trinity of flavors. I'm going to put a little onions, naturally. You have to have that Louisiana flavor. Onions, celery, all of the usual things that I like to put in a dish, just like that. 
bell peppers, of course, green, red, orange, all the colors that's available in the supermarkets today. We may not have had these at Kent House back in the 1700s, but who knows, certainly some of the little hot peppers may have been there. And once all of that goes into it now, my special flavoring from the plantation, this is cubed red and green apples. And I'm gonna put this all over the sausage, just like that. Look how pretty this dish comes. It's a very, very nice, colorful dish, and you know that I love those colors. And you can see how the sausage is starting to let all of that oil out of it, too. And you can, as I say, pour all of that out if you want to, because the sauce will actually be made with a little bit apple cider. And you can get apple cider in any of the stores. You can get it in a bottle, in a can, or just use a stock if you don't want it quite as sweet. Put a little chicken stock or chicken bouillon cubes right into this sausage. Look at here. I'm gonna put that apple cider right on top of that. Oh, listen to that sizzle down in there. And what would I do next? Well. I would put a black iron lid right on top of it because I'm going to create a Dutch oven. That's exactly what this is, just like the open hearth kitchen at uh, Kent House always cooks with the uh, Dutch oven on the open hearth with the coals on top of it. This is basically what I'm doing. But I'm going to put it in my own oven back here at about 350 degrees. Well, I'll tell you, this is a heavy little skillet. 350 degrees for about... 35, 40 minutes, and what you're gonna have is a dish that looks just like this. Take a look at this beautiful link sausage, all nice and curled up on this platter. And of course, you can see that I have apple rings all around the outside. I'm gonna show you how we did these apple rings in just a second. Of course, I can finish garnishing with just a little bit more of the red, a touch of this nice orange pepper. And of course, to keep it juicy, you may even want to put a little bit more apple cider on it. Really, really nice dish from the kitchens of Kent House in Alexandria, Louisiana. Okay, that's my first dish. I gotta fire up this little pot for you because the next dish is, I think, one of the most interesting dishes I have found in all of my plantation recipe hunting. This dish is called creamed radishes. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're about to walk out of the kitchen, right? Well, don't do it, because this is a very interesting dish. This dish probably originated because radishes are some of the first crops to come out of the garden in the early spring. So when the radishes would peep out of the ground, naturally they'd want to go and pick them up and make some interesting dish before all of the other spring vegetables were harvested. So they would go out and get them. These are nice little red radishes here, but of course there's about two or three different varieties the white ones, of course, the Indians used to pick a real little, a little skinny radish that grew underground. They knew where to find it, and they would pull them and bring them into the markets. So a lot of use of radishes in Louisiana cooking. But I've taken these radishes and sliced them. Look how nice and colorful they are. And the red skin will actually help to color the sauce that I'm going to make this cream radish dish out of. So in my little pot here, I'm going to start off by putting in a little butter or buttery flavored oil. This is that specialty oil that you can find in all of the stores. It's buttery flavored, but low in cholesterol. You can find that. And I'll let this come to a heat, and while that's done, they're being done, I'm gonna put the radishes in a pot of boiling water because I'm gonna poach these for just a second like this. Just throw them on in there, and you can season this water too. You can put I don't know, a little salt. I'll put a touch of salt and a little touch of pepper because I'm going to poach these for just a second. Obviously, it doesn't take a long time to poach these radishes, so put them in right about the time that you start your white sauce. Once the butter starts to melt, again, I'm going to put my typical Louisiana vegetables to make a simple white sauce, onions, celery, bell pepper. In most parts of the country, you would never see all of these vegetables going into a basic white sauce. You'd just see flour, butter, and maybe a little clove and a pinch of nutmeg, but here in Louisiana, well, onion, celery, bell pepper, and of course, a nice big spoon of garlic. A little touch of garlic in there. And then we would saute all of this around because we're trying to flavor our white sauce before we put any of the, uh, flour or anything else in it. We want to flavor the butter. 
Once that's done, I can sprinkle in a couple tablespoons of flour. And again, you want to remember the formula when making a white sauce, about one cup of butter, one cup of flour, will thicken about three quarts of liquid. So it takes a, a lot of liquid to pick up all of this flour roux. Basically what we're doing is making a white roux. As you can see, look at that nice roux in here. Now, the interesting thing is that I'm gonna actually take some of the water from these radishes that are poaching here, and I'm gonna kinda move the radishes out of the way with a little strainer, and I'm gonna get some of this hot radish stock, which is already starting to turn pink, and put this down into my white sauce. And I'm gonna stir this, I gotta keep it stirring, because you wanna make sure that the consistency of that sauce is just about right. You can see how it picks up that stock right away. And again, just continue to get that stock out of there. About three or four really nice big ladles of the stock. Of course, remember you have to put cream in it too, so you don't want to put too much of the stock, but all of that great radish flavor will now be down in the bottom of this white sauce, also flavored with all those great Louisiana vegetables. Look how nice that is. And then I can add my heavy whipping cream, skim milk, yogurt, whatever you want to put into it. You can do whatever you'd like here, but I'm gonna use some heavy whipping cream so I can stir that around just like that. And I'll season with a little touch of salt and pepper. And to finish it, well, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reach down in here and get all of these nice radishes out like this. And you can see how quickly they poach. Doesn't take long at all. And I'm gonna pour them right down into the white sauce. You can see how simple that is. And once this is done, Again, finish the seasonings with your favorite spice or herbs for just a couple of minutes. Stir it in, I can cut all of this off. And let me show you what this looks like. I can stir it in like this. And let me show you, once we plate it up, just how nice a dish this is. Take a look at these beautiful creamed radishes from Kent House Plantation. Look how nice that is, beautiful pink color. You can finish them in the oven too for just a couple of minutes if you want to. So that's the creamed radishes. And one other dish that I really enjoyed and I've tasted, in fact, we ate this at Kent House today. We had that wonderful lunch over there. And this is the branded pears. You can see just how beautiful these pears are, all nice and poached in brandy and a little bit sugar water. Just a great, great dish from Kent House. Okay, well, hey, that's my cooking, but I told you my good buddy, a great cook, was coming into the kitchen to visit with us, and hey, Marion Donaldson, look, look at this doing? basket. What do you have here? Well, there's a few little odds and ends. <laughs> a few? But I made some uh, double apricot bread. Oh, look at this. And I thought beautiful. you might like oh, that. This bread, is, this bread is gorgeous. And what else? Well, I... I like to do jams and jellies. Oh. This is blueberry jam. This is beautiful blueberry. Oh, I can't, I can't wait. And this is strawberry jam. I want you to know I, I went out and picked those blueberries Did myself. you? Well, fine. I, well, I and would expect no less, you know. Mayhaw jelly. <laughs> Look how great. Mayhaw, a little Louisiana berry. Oh, well, yes. thank you so much. I'm going to add these to... And I'm going to add these to my collection, I guarantee you. Well, thank you so much for bringing all of You're this welcome. and coming to visit. You know, when we were out at Kent House, we had an opportunity to go into the kitchen when you were doing uh, mm -hmm. the cooking that day, and you gave me a little demonstration. So I want to share that with our friends out here. So why don't you All tell right. us about what we're looking at here in the, uh, in the old kitchen at Kent House. What is well, this? Well, of course, we're looking at the uh, fireplace itself, and we're pulling that uh, kettle out that's hanging there that has the uh, fricasseed chicken. Oh, boy, that it. was a great dish, and wasn't it? it's just about ready. Doesn't that look pretty? Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. And then I tell you, the coals down on that hearth are just so hot. Yeah, that, and actually, that's how you cook. You actually pull the coals right under the pot there. That's Look at right. That. You do. You cook like that. You take your little shovel and you bring your coals out on the hearth. And you put them under and on. You right. saw that on oh, the top. sure I did, yeah. And these were our butter beans. The butter beans, yeah. And Flavored that's just, with bacon and oh. a few other little odds and ends. And that's that old Dutch oven I was talking about just a couple mm -hmm. minutes ago with the heat from on top. What a great thing. Well, and see, it has that rim right. around there to hold those. Oh, coals. and I remember this. This is the tin oh, kitchen. Oh, this is our favorite thing. It, it is called a tin kitchen, 
you have the meat on the spit. And that's pork oh, roast. And then and all and the vegetables on the bottom. And then the vegetables are underneath, and you make a marinade, and you baste your uh, bed, your meat, and it all drops down. Did that all come out of that good cookbook right there? Oh, that's Amelie Bayer Compton's cookbook. I remember the Hand bread written. coming out of here. Look at the bread in this oven. This is your sourdough. Well, that's a little sourdough bread. I tell you what, it wasn't a little sourdough bread. That was a big sourdough. Yeah. It was, it was kind of small loaf. And we sat down. We had an opportunity to sit and eat all of those dishes. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that we ate that day, I just showed on the bottom of our sausages, and that was the hunted apple rings. And I want to show everybody how we did all those right. because I think it's so special. Look, I have some right here in that little plate. Oh, good. And good. in my black iron skillet right here on the stove, I've made a little poaching liquid. This poaching liquid is made with honey. We could use Louisiana sugar cane syrup here in, uh, in Bayou Country. And we add a little red wine vinegar to it, really nice. And once we bring it to a nice little boil or a little sizzle, we're going to poach the apples. The apples, red and green, we leave the peelings on, and we just put them down into the poaching liquid like this and we cook them for just a couple of seconds on each side to get them real nice and tender. And this is all it takes. It just takes a couple of minutes, and they pick up all of the flavor of the honey and, uh, and cane syrup vinegar, and it's nice little sweet and sour taste. Now, you could actually use this on ice cream. Oh, you need on ice cream? cream? Or any, yeah, or any, any topping you want. Really, really a nice dish, and we use it with the sausages. Mm -hmm. Well, let's come on over here and talk right. a little bit more about Kent House. What a... Really nice, nice spot that is. I, oh, we I enjoy it <laughs> very much. Now, I know that y'all have been doing open hearth cookery there for about 10 years. Have you been yes. there since the beginning? Yes, that's right. There were a group of homemakers who decided they would like to do this. They had just brought in this, redone the, the uh, chimney, everything like that. And uh, they brought in a lady from Dallas who gave us lessons in what to do. And she was basically an expert at open heart cookery. Oh, she was. She herself had been in several places up north. Where, where did the kitchen come from? I know it's uh, authentic. It to came the day. from south of uh, Bunky, uh, from Augusta Plantation. Right. And they brought it up and put it right there uh, yes. on the plantation. Uh -huh. Why is open heart cookery so important? Why do we have to still do it today and show people because how it's done? Because you want your children and your grandchildren to know how people lived when they were on a plantation that had to be dependent on itself. So, so it's kind of like a, a living museum then. Oh, it's it, a, that's right. right. That's exactly what it is. What's the most difficult task uh, as, as compared to cooking today in our own kitchens? Well, for little ladies, lifting the heavy pots probably, <laughs> or the wood, because we have to make our fire. But mostly the safety part because we wear our long dresses and we have to be sure we don't let them rake over the coals. Now, now when y'all were looking in this old cookbook that you found there, I know you probably found some food items that were common then that would be just a little bit strange for us today. Uh, what, what are some of those? <laughs> well, <laughs> cooking radishes was not one of the things that you find today. <laughs> oh, I love them. That's good. That's right. I'm glad you do. <laughs> That tastes a little too much like turnips to me. Well, they, they, I, I remember looking at the calves head recipe in that book. That had to be a very strange... Oh, that one. That was a disaster, really, <laughs> because we'd gotten the calves head. It was just beautiful. Terrible. But <laughs> we cooked it according to the directions, and there was too much grease in that head. So, so it never wasn't really made a who, good dish. Who, who comes? Who comes to watch the open hearth cookery? The school children come in the spring, when they have their day off from school, and we have bus tours. And the French people who come from France, with Louisiana and its French people, they love coming and seeing the way we cook. Well, I tell you, I had a great time there, and I thank you so much for coming by and sharing well, you're all welcome. those great... I enjoyed uh, it very much. Well, we appreciate it, and thank you all for stopping by, and come back again as we continue to cook up more of these great plantation foods of Louisiana. Let's taste some of those cream radishes. I'm going to show you that they good.
Funding for this program was provided in part by Bruce Foods Corporation, makers of Bruce's Yams and other distinctive Louisiana-style food products. Chef John Fosa's Plantation Celebrations, Recipes from Our Louisiana Mansions, is a full-color 335-page book containing food history, recipes, and over 150 photographs from these southern landmarks. For your copy, send a check or money order for $28.50 to Louisiana Public Broadcasting, 7860 and Selmo Lane, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70810. Or use your credit card by calling toll-free 1-800-973-7246.